Recently, This Is America and the World visited Nepal. It's a beautiful country in South Asia located between China and India. Nepal may not be a wealthy nation, but it's a truly rich world unto itself, offering breathtaking landscapes, diverse cultures, ancient traditions, as well as warm and very welcoming people. From the majestic Himalayas, including Mount Everest, to jungle safaris and countless sacred temples, tourists, adventurers, nature lovers, and spiritual seekers will all find something unique to experience in Nepal. On this program, we'll learn about the economy of Nepal and its plans for growth and development. In the shadow of the Himalayas and next door to the major trading partners of China and India, Nepal's smaller size, political independence, and eager workforce make Nepal an attractive country for foreign investment. We'll speak with senior government and private sector leaders to find out what drives Nepal's economy today and its investment potential in hydropower, agriculture, IT and tourism. Join us as This is America and the World visits Nepal. This is America and the World is made possible by the Japan America Society of Washington, D.C. 21st Century Citizenship, the Frank Islam and Debbie Dreisman Foundation. The Nepal Tourism Board. The Sultanate of Oman. The Kingdom of Morocco. The Forerunner Foundation. The Rotondaro Family Trust. And the Embassy Series, Uniting People Through Musical Diplomacy. To learn about Nepal's economy, trade, and investment opportunities, we had the good fortune to meet with the Minister of Finance and Nepal's Minister of Communications and Information Technology. How would you characterize the economy of Nepal? Uh, Nepal's economy is still, you know, uh, agrarian based. Uh, more than 50% of population is still depends on uh, agriculture. In that sense, I will say still agrarian, uh, but their contribution to the GDP is only 25%. In that sense, 50% the rest of the population uh, uh, is dependent on some other sectors contributing more than 76% of the GDP. So agriculture, 25%. I understand remittance is important here, and also tourism. Hmm? Yeah, tourism is uh, because of the COVID. Uh, tourism was business was down, but now it's coming back into the former form. And I believe that uh, in coming days it will grow, and we have uh, this hotel industry is growing, and new hotels are coming, and uh, outside investment is also con coming. Uh, so that is one, the one thing which may contribute in a big way in the future. Uh, we have good hydro sector, uh, so we have uh, energy surplus during rainy season. Uh, for dry season, some you know problem, but uh, I think there are more projects coming, and Nepali themselves themselves are investing in a big way, so that is a good sign. So overall, uh, this is a good place. You know, a beautiful place with varied climate. You know, you just little bit climb upward, you will feel cooler. If you want to go down in the valley, it's hotter. So you will find all kind of climatic conditions and uh, varied uh, topography. So from that perspective, also I think this is a good destination for investor. If you were to sell. Uh, an American business, yeah. say, to come to Nepal, what would you say? Actually, first thing is very friendly, good people. Oh, yes. And good climate. Not only from that perspective, from the business point of view also. We have make it very easy 
We have Investment Board of Nepal, the one window system for the bigger investor. They will clear it out in a short period of time. For even a smaller investor, uh, we, we have pretty good uh, one, one, do, uh, one window system. At the same time, we have good tax incentives for hydropower investors. They are getting like all the uh, tax incentives, uh, no tax for importing uh, goods that need to be uh, used in the hydropower sector. So at the same time, there are other incentives as well. So uh, from the incentives point of view, it's good. From the you know young population that we have, we have huge dice for us. They wanted to come in. They are skilled people, a lot of them outside. But if they see good investment coming, opportunity for employment, they are ready to use. Uh, so uh, from that perspective also, uh, cheap, comparatively cheap labor force. So I think this is a good f uh, place for investment from so many point of view. And I think there is huge prospect for, you know, investor, U.S., and some other places to invest in IT. So IT yeah. and hydro. Yes, IT. Hydro right. is important because of the mountains, right? Yeah, mountains because we have a river system flowing from uh, the high Himalayas. Yeah. So you, we have three, four big river system, mm -hmm. and there are many other smaller, you know. So that's a, that's a good investment, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Hydro and IT. Yeah. And tourism, of yeah, course. Yeah, tourism, in fact, because there's huge potential, potential in tourism sector, but we want to diversify. There are so many yeah. other... Diversification in, yeah, is the yeah, name yeah. of the game. Exactly. So, and that's your job, huh? Yeah. We are di doing our best, and we'll do it. Are you worn out, or you got ready no, to go? Not at all. Not at all. Thank you for coming. Minister, Very thank nice you. Meeting. Thank you so much for the conversation. Thank you. How has technology changed Nepal? In recent times, there has been a lot of change in techno technological sector. Especially in the last decades, we have experienced unexpected change in the technological sector. We use a lot of technical devices, though we don't produce it. Uh, so I can say that we have changed a lot in IT sector. What does Nepal want to do with the whole area of digital technology? So what we believe is that using technology, we can also uh, address all the irregularities that are there and various problems that are there, and it can be solved by use of technology. So we are having program on Digital Nepal as well. It is being financed by the World Bank. So what we believe is that by using technology in a greater extent, uh, the government can be more transparent uh, and it can also address various problems. The current problem that we are facing is related to the access to technology. In various uh, rural parts of Nepal, people still do not have access to um, technology, quality technology. So government is making effort in that direction. And government has felt that uh, need to address uh, these issues. Um, in our policy and budget also, we have mentioned all these things. How does Nepal fit into the world of technology? Making cell phones, making chips, wh wh where do you see Nepal playing a role in the next five or ten years? Thank you for your question. So what she mentioned is that in last main um, decade we have made so much progress regarding the use of technology. Uh, regarding manufacture, um, we have still not reached to that level, but in yesterday's budget, so we had um, put this chapter into our budget. Government has planned to prioritize startups um, and um, encourage uh, in, uh, persons working abroad to invest in this sector. So, Honorable Minister has also mentioned that in yesterday's budget, 1% um, of the total fund was allocated for research and technology. Uh, she believes that this will help to promote the technolo technological um, you know, uh, startups. The government is in, in committed to this sector. Uh, Nepal is also facing challenges of cyber security. So this is one of the challenges that Nepal is facing. In IT sector, the Nepal government is trying to encourage foreign as well as domestic investors uh, to invest in this sector. And the government is trying to create a favorable environment for, for this as well. You're the Minister of Communication. Yeah. What message do you have to the people 
of Nepal. The government is very committed um, to technology because this today's world is the world of technology. Um, we have challenges in Nepal because of geographical complexity. We have digital divide. So there's a need to minimize this digital divide and government is making effort in that direction. There's also need to increase quality in IT sector and the government is working in this uh, sector. Uh, regarding all the daily activities, really, whether it be health sector, agriculture sector, educational sector, production, so whatever these sector are there, there's a need to use technology to optimum level as much as possible. And government is focusing on that. Um, Nepal is an agriculture country, so use of technology will ha can help to increase the productivity. Uh, by using technology, we can also increase the revenue of the country. So we are making programs so that can so that people of Nepal can be felt um, can feel this uh, program of government of Nepal. So we are expecting support of various national and inter international partners in this vision of ours. So we look forward to that. Minister, thank you, thank you thank for a very honest answer and thank you for your hospitality being with you today. Thank you, Tabal. I want to thank you as a minister. Oh, it's a pleasure to welcome you, and I had a chance to put my things to you. So it's a pleasure to welcome to Nepal as well. Thank you. Thank you. Nepal is definitely open for business and foreign investment will play a major role as Nepal continues its growth as a developing nation. I talked with the chairperson of the American Chamber of Commerce in Nepal. So uh, if someone said, why Nepal? Why invest in Nepal? What would you say? Oh, wow, that's a great question. Um, the American Chamber here, have, we've ident identified three sectors in terms of opportunities for uh, involvement of private sector, all right? So opportunities for investments. And we have chosen energy, uh, we've chosen tourism, and we've cho chosen IT, or people knowledge-based economy. For energy, you know, um, with all the mountains, and, and let me also mention, it's just not energy, but it's actually renewable green energy because these are actually, uh, we're just simply using rivers and water and gravity helping us, right? So if you look at the energy potential in Nepal, it's about almost 40,000 megawatt, out of which only 2,500 megawatt is currently being produced in Nepal right now, right? And, and it, it, even at that rate, we are already at an energy surplus and we've already started exporting energy to uh, India and now and, and, and talks of doing the same in Bangladesh as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just to give you a context of what that 40,000 means is if you look at India, India currently is a trillion dollar economy and their installed capacity is about 400,000 megawatts. Mm -hmm. So we have the potential for uh, energy to power 10% of India's current demand today. So if you look at the scale of things, yes. there's a huge uh, potential for growth in the energy sector. The second is tourism. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I believe that you did make some uh, trips around the country. Yes. And I hope you will agree with me in saying that this is really a beautiful country. Absolutely. Um, we've got God-given nature, great stuff that's happening from trekking to, you know, religious uh, tourism to adventure travel, you know, we have a lot of uh, potential for tourism. However, due to uh, infrastructure challenges, challenges, we, we, we've been able to only grow that to a certain extent, right? So now uh, those infrastructure challenges has, the, the process of mitigating that has started. So for example, we now have three international airports versus one. And now, because of those infrastructure advancements, there is a lot of room for tourism growth, mm -hmm. right? So, in terms of so, so basically, tourism is another sector where we feel there is a lot of opportunity. And third is, you know, uh, the the, the knowledge-based economy. And what I mean by that is, Nepal's population is about uh, 30 million, and out of that, you know, 50% is less than the age of 30. And our education sector sort of produces about um, 100,000 undergrads, graduates every year. Our literacy rate, if you compare it with, you know, and what, what a literacy rate means is like high school education, is at a, a whopping 76%. So we are good in terms of those kind of metrics. So essentially we have people with amazing skills that's available for work, right? So, and these are white collar work. And, 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 then, and I'm not talking about these people leaving the country to go for uh, foreign destinations to work. 
But essentially, you know, now with uh, remote work, you know, now with COVID, everything, uh, businesses around the world are very familiar with uh, remote work, mm -hmm. right? They have mm -hmm. one form of remote work or the other. And if uh, businesses, like if American businesses would want to set up a, a, a low cost um, center in Nepal, they're able to do it. Right, so we're talking about cost savings of up to even 75% of um, line item uh, costs per HR. Mm -hmm. right? so, so there's a huge opportunity in terms of actually saving that cost by doing a lot of work remotely. We've got a recipe for amazing things to happen here. For a business sector to thrive, you just need support for the environment and it'll grow, right? Support from the environment and it'll grow. The business community has clearly received that support from the environment. The government has been very proactive. The other uh, international agencies have been very proactive and supportive. I think we all agree what needs to be done to, you know, in terms of harnessing opportunities here. Uh, but yeah, I see a lot of growth. I mean, I, I mean, regardless of uh, the issues that's happening around the world, I think Nepal is sort of, uh, for lack of a better word, maybe insulated in some way. So, mm. you know, and then uh, uh, insulin in some way. And then I think if you were to do something here, and especially in these three sectors, it's got immense potential to scale. So that was tourism, hydro, IT. Correct. The country is lucky that you studied abroad and came back home. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, <laughs> Thank so, you much. so much. Dennis. Early in the morning, the Minister of Culture, Tourism, and Civil Aviation led a hands-on citizen cleanup at the country's most sacred Hindu temple. Later, we had a chance to talk about the unique culture of Nepal. What would you say is at the heart of the culture of Nepal? Do the mystique of Nepal is diversity in unity. Hundreds of ethnic communities speaking hundreds of languages and dialects living together in a perfect harmony is very surprising and mystical about Nepal. What will surprise us about Nepal as a first-time visitor? Prakriti ko some water surprise a first-time visitor our natural and cultural heritage. We have Mount Everest, the tallest peak on earth. We have Lumbini, the birthplace of Lord Buddha. We have Paspatinath, a holy shrine for the Hindus, and we have multiple customs, rituals, values, norms, religions, and all of them in together surprise a first time visitor. I love the greeting of Namaste. In Sanskrit, we call Atiti Devo Bhava, God's guests are God's. We have that very much enshrined in Nepali culture. So you, we may be different, following different cultures and religions, but we always value tourists and guests at costs. And Namaskar is respecting and invoking God in the guest. Tourism, very important to Nepal. Talk about the importance. Yes, tourism is very important in Nepal. Especially, it is our spine of our economy. It is one of the major pillars of our economy. And conservation of natural treasures, preservation of our cultural treasures, promotion and development of all the heritages and treasures, and making Nepal well-known internationally. If we are able to invite and bring tourists and promote tourism in Nepal, it can be a game changer in the economic development of Nepal. If you were not the minister, you were the guide. If you were the guide, you were our guide. What would you have us see? What would you have us do? Where would you have us travel to? First of all, I'd have taken you to the heritage sites of the Kathmandu Valley, which boasts of being a civilized city for over 2,000 years. And I would take you to the places which are so spectacularly surprising, the gifts given to us by our forefathers. I would take you to the mountains, snow-capped beautiful mountains. I would take them to the beyond mountainous terrain, Mustang and Manan. They are like cold deserts. I would take you to the birthplace of Lord Buddha, the apostle of peace, the light of Asia. And I would also take you to Rara, 
the biggest pristine lake nestled at high altitude. And obviously I'll take it to temples which are rich in their heritage, history and culture. Thank you for the tour. Minister, thank you so much for our visit with you today. Thank you. No mistake. No mistake. We traveled roughly 30 minutes by plane from Kathmandu to Nepal's main tourist destination, Pokhara. It's also a major starting point for trekkers exploring the Himalayan mountain region. We were welcomed by the president of the Pokhara Tourism Council and met up with one of Pokhara's top national tour guides to discover why Pokhara was so popular. Pokhara. Yes, sir. Tell me a little bit about why Pokhara is so unique. Uh, Pokhara is one of the very beautiful city in Nepal. And uh, this is called the capital of tourism. Every year, uh, thousands of people come to visit here. It has got uh, three regions. Three we have got three types of tourism here. One, the mountain tourism. So, and the second one, the pilgrims tourism. Pilgrims? Yes, sir. And the third one is like normal uh, sightseeing tourism. Mm -hmm. Tell us two or three places that we should see while we're here. Peace Pagoda. Actually, the, you know, the Peace and Pagoda, it has, uh, it has got two different words, Peace and Pagoda. Uh, especially this concept has come from, uh, uh, comes after the Second World War. So the Japanese um, uh, Bichu, he had an aim to build more than 80,000 Peace Pagoda all over the world after the Second World War. So only Peace can bring the prosperity in the world, mm. you know. So, uh, because of that concept, we are spreading the pagodas all over the world to keep the world peaceful. There's also a uh, mountain museum. Yes, sir. Tell me about the mountain museum. It has got a three sections. The people section, so how people live in the mountain. Okay, number one. Number two. Number two, the activity sections. Activities, the mountain activities. Okay. How they live there. Already. Like basically they do farming, animal keeping and tourism. Uh -huh. In the mountain. And the third three? The third one about the mountain climbing. Ah. Mountain expedition. So in addition to the Peace Pagoda. Yes sir. The museum, they also have me taking a cooking class. Nepali food throughout the country was terrific. And at the beautiful Barahi Hotel, we had a visit with the executive chef who prepared a traditional Nepali meal called tali. They call it Nepali tali with rice, vegetables, lentils, chicken or lamb, and lots of extras. That's perfect, huh? Yeah. This That's is perfect. Meal for dinner, lunch, lunch or dinner. dinner. Perfect. Both time, yeah. The meal was fantastic. And my takeaway from the cooking adventure was don't be afraid to use more spices, especially ginger. So as we're finishing our conversation, right, sir. what one thing will you have me take back with me to America? One lesson or one thought? Oh, it's a very difficult for me to summarize uh, all of this into one thing, but try. <laughs> the memory is the most important thing from Nepal. The memory, memory you will never forget even though if you want to forget. The, the view of mountain, the, the warm welcomes from Nepalese people, and uh, the nature. And uh, if you come here uh, during the season of festivals, we have a lot of festivals. There are more temples then uh, more temples than a house, more uh, gods and Ganeshas than the people, <laughs> and more festivals than uh, days in a year. These all feelings in your heart would make you very happy and welcoming. Is, is that a right answer? That is a good answer. Thank you so much for the education and being with you. Very happy to see you, sir. Very happy to see you. Thank you. Namaste. Namaste.
Special thanks to the Yak and Yeti Hotel, our home away from home in downtown Kathmandu. And for this program, the Barahi Hotel. I want to share with you some short pieces from interviews that I've done over the years. I call them reflections, and you can find them on the media platform Substack. They're filled with wisdom and inspiration and motivation. So search Dennis Holy on Substack.com. Enjoy and share. For information about This Is America and the World, visit our YouTube channel, This Is America TV. Visit our website, thisisamerica.net, and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. This Is America and the World is made possible by the Japan America Society of Washington, D.C. 21st Century Citizenship, the Frank Islam and Debbie Dreisman Foundation. The Nepal Tourism Board. The Sultanate of Oman. The Kingdom of Morocco. The Forerunner Foundation. The Rotondaro Family Trust. And the Embassy Series, Uniting People Through Musical Diplomacy. <laughs>